Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here with another video, and you'll have to excuse me, today the cut on my eye is actually killing me, uh, I'm, I'm crying, uh, but um, given what the video is about, I might be weeping from the deluge of hypocrisy, and in some cases stupidity, uh, that I've seen. Um, I've been busy with rehearsals, but I can now wade into the subject. Uh, I'm going to talk about this outrage over ESL's two-year VAC ban policy, and I'm just going to say this right at the start of the video. If you're the kind of person that like can't take a dissenting opinion, uh, just fuck off, because I'm, I'm going totally against the community, totally against the pros. I want to see some sanity. I want to see some logical consistency. Uh, if you're the kind of person that's like going to spam me on Twitter and be like, "Yeah, but you're advocating," I'm not interested, mate. Like this is my opinion. Uh, I've heard yours for like two, three days now. All right, so uh, just putting that out there. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. So. For those that missed it, I don't know how you could do, it's the big talking point in CS right now, but for those who have missed it, uh, what happened was ESL made an announcement that they were going to alter their policy for ESL events um, and make it so it was only uh, two years uh, you would get a VAC ban, you would only be banned for two years and then you would be eligible to compete in contests a lot and this in itself um you know opens up the potential for notable vac band players to come back and a lot of people a lot of pros got upset about this in fact the uniform reaction was this is a disgrace esl sort your events out now i enjoy taking a shit on esl when they do something stupid i enjoy taking a shit on anyone that does anything i think is damaging to esports but this isn't it this it isn't damaging to esports, and I'm going to outline a case, not just as to why it's very unrealistic to expect that lifetime ban should be enforced, but I'm also going to outline some of the hypocrisy that I saw from a lot of the uh, pros and, P and, the, and the community just in their uh, like faux outrage. Because I, I don't believe if you sat these people down and talked to them sensibly or laid a case out like I'm about to, I don't think they would be still a zealot and be like no you must be banned for life you know some people still will be but i think the vast majority of people would realize yeah okay we're just kind of knee jerking here you know which is uh, a bit ridiculous but anyway so let's start right uh there's a lot of talk about you know once a cheater always a cheater uh you know uh if you get vaxxed you shouldn't be able to compete you know you've, you've cheated at your fellow pros uh, you're dishonest all of this stuff and i'll give you some notable examples in a moment but let's just go back to the very first moment of hypocrisy uh and this is the kind of ground zero of hypocrisy this goes way back to 2012 when csgo was being developed was in the beta phase uh there was communications with pros etc from valve and one of the things that was going to happen because Counter-Strike Global Offensive uh, was uh, on, on the source engine, there was talk that, you know, Valve would just make any bans that occurred on the source engine were going to be carried forward. And you can see here, Va Valve had said, if you got vacked in Source, you know, or Team Fortress 2 or, you know, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch or, or Dodge, it would carry forward into Global Offensive. And you can see that Chad, if you remember him uh, from, I think he was the Hidden Path guy back in the initial development. I don't know what he's doing right now. Uh, but after discussion with the pros, they said, well, we're going to remove the link between VAC bans and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, this was done specifically because there were some uh, pros that had had, you know, source bans in the past. And they didn't want, you know, I'm not going to name them because these people aren't being vocal on Twitter and making themselves look like hypocrites. But, you know, you can dig into it, you can find it yourselves. Those people who had like VAC band accounts, people who, you know, uh, had cheating previous. And obviously they wanted a fresh start, fresh game, fresh start. That was the ethos. Now, if this whole once a cheater, always a cheater mantra uh, was true, then why didn't we just agree that, well, if you got VAC banned in Source, fuck it, 1.6, let's bring that in. If you've got a VAC banned in any version of Counter-Strike, it'll carry forward into Global Offensive. The means are there, the technology's there, 
So why didn't we agree that? Why didn't pros, when they were in consultation with Valve, agree that was going to be good? Well, they didn't. They went the opposite way. Because I imagine the, the, the thought process was like, well, we've actually got some teammates who've been VAC banned, and we would like them to get involved in this new iteration of, you know, of Counter-Strike. We'd like them to be involved in Global Offensive. So it's interesting, isn't it, how it's kind of, you know, this flip-flopping. So that was the initial point of hypocrisy. I don't know how many people know that fact. I was there. I helped with the game when it was in beta phase. And I distributed beta keys and, and gave feedback and did server stress testing. You know, I was there at the beginning. And I remember this very distinctly, especially because it was specifically for a source engine. And I worked for a website called cadred.org, which was the only site that covered, you know, to a, to a high level, Counter-Strike source competition. HLTV completely rejected it. They weren't interested. They said it was a shit game. Um, and, and, you know, that was that. So we, we were the ones who were kind of handling it from that perspective. So the source side of things is something I'm very au fait about. So that was complete nonsense. Uh, the idea that, oh, you know, we, we loathe cheaters so much. You loathe cheaters so much that when you were in direct talks with a developer, you gave a loophole for previously banned cheaters to get a fresh start. Okay? Fact. So that was the first thing that I wanted to get on the record. Now, the second thing is, sorry, my nose starts to run when my eye runs as well. It just wants a piece of the action. Uh, is a lot of people were like, well, why did ESL do this? Well, there's many reasons. There are many reasons why ESL did this. I'll give you the top three. First of all, ESL is owned by MTG. MTG has funded something uh, called the Esports Integrity Commission, or commissioners. Uh, and what this has done, and we, we've interviewed the the founder, uh, it's headed up by a lawyer who has represented band players in appeals uh, in real sports, pr primarily cricket as it happens, and if you are going to fund something like this, where the central premise is that pun punishments need to be contextual, and nobody deserves a life ban uh, for, for fucking up, or being, well, not nobody, but only the worst offenders deserve life bans. Only the Lance Armstrongs deserve life bans, you know? If if you are funding a business that central core tenant is that, then you have to be consistent across your other businesses. Uh, I think that makes sense. Um, and obviously, they'll want to work with ESIC at, at various points in the future. I mean, you know, ESL has drug testing bans, right, where other leagues don't. Um, I think that's a bit over the top. I don't agree that there is uh, a problem with performance enhancing drugs in in esports, uh, personally. That's my professional opinion. But again, that's the route they went down. And I imagine if anyone got caught uh, for testing positive for what, uh, po performance enhancing drug in an esports context, it would probably be eSick actually that would be representing them at the appeal. Now imagine if ESL were just like, no, well, we have life bans, but you also, you know, your parent company also funds eSick. So it, it would be absurd. So they've got to acquiesce and kind of let eSick in and lift the curtain a little bit. Perhaps crucially, it aligns with their brand values. Well, what do you mean, Richard? How can it align with their brand values? They have always had a two-year, well, for as long as I can remember, at least, they've always had this two-year rehabilitation scheme. And this was this was brought in, I don't know exactly when, I kind of want to say around about 2003, 2004, like, I might be wrong, uh, but it's certainly been there a long, long time. And what this had was that when people were getting banned from ESL, ESL was the only show in town. So if you wanted to play like pugs, pickup games, if you wanted to play in fun leagues, fun ladders, uh, you had to go to ESL. They represented so many games. But if you got banned, you weren't allowed to play, right? So if you fucked up once and cheated, you were out permanently. And people were like, well, look, I want to come back. It was a long time ago. It was blah, blah, blah. So what they said was, we will introduce a rehabilitation uh, scheme. And the rehabilitation scheme has been there for a long, long part of time. And it's if you agree that you cheat and you vow never to do it again, you will be allowed back in to ESL after a period of two years. Right? This has been there for a long, long time. And uh, you can see here, this is the it's still there. ESL rehab. Cheating on ESL is punished with the hardest barrage possible, a barrage of two years. In the fast-moving world of online gaming, this is almost equivalent to a lifetime barrage. But the ESL gives convicted cheaters the one-time possibility to rehabilitate themselves by writing an essay. 
And this is what they do. So they, how to rehab. You, there's only one chance to write an essay. You have to write an essay saying why you did it, how you won't do it again, how you understand why it's wrong. Uh, if you fail the criteria, there is no second chance. So this is if you uh, cheat again. Um, if you've tried to bypass a ban, says a recidivist. So again, you, know, you cheat again. Uh, creating or using a fake account. You know, that's it. You, you lose your rehabilitation. Uh, and, and you've also got to be uh, an ESL trusted level three. So you've got to prove that you're a community member, not just some malicious outside force. It tells you how to write the essay. Now, where was the where was the outrage, uh, y you know, in this? Um, and you can see there's some statistics here. Maybe it did only come in in 2011. I'm pretty sure they had some form of rehab back in uh, 1.6 before this. Uh, but you can see these are the stats for in 2011 and to 2015 of how many people uh, applied for rehab, how many players were successful to get rehab and be allowed back in, how many people fucked up and got their rehab revoked. I mean, this is the thing here. So, you know, they, they charted it, they showed it, and, and, and they offered people this opportunity. There was no outrage about this existing. I mean, just none. Like, you know, a little bit here and there, like just murmurings on forums. No widespread, oh, ESL have this policy. We will never play in ESL tournaments. Okay, well, that will make sense, right? Because what they're saying here is effectively cheaters can be rehabilitated. And it seems that today, currently, uh, the, the consensus is that they can't, which is nonsense. So, and, and I want to just stress that, and I'll probably repeat this many times over the video. The once a cheater, always a cheater mantra is bullshit. There is absolutely no uh, substantial evidence for that whatsoever. That means that if you ever do anything once, you will always do it from now until the end of time. That's just not psychologically consistent with how humans operate, you know? So, the other uh, uh, reason why they've done this, and I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think this is important as well, is it shows autonomy. It shows that ESL are their own entity. You know, we've seen this before with ESL funding their own majors, dropping a quarter of a million in, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, and that they, they, if they have a different vision to other leagues, that i.e. they don't support lifetime bans, or they have a different vision to a games developer, i.e. Valve in this case, uh, they'll just do it. They'll do their vision. They're an independent company. Uh, and I, I think you have to you have to set the bar. You have to be true to your values. If your values believe in rehabilitation, um, to enforce in in just one or two tournaments lifetime bans, but not in other uh, competitions, that's not consistent. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's potential legal ramifications. I don't want to talk about that. I, I think ESL don't want to talk about that. I'm going to respect ESL on this uh but um certainly I, I think it's been talked about elsewhere and again you can sort of look into the whole legal aspects of banning people for cheating and this kind of thing uh it's one of the reasons why we don't have a blacklist across multiple leagues there's certainly um european considerations let's say now let's get into player hypocrisy because i was amazed right like i i thought the players sure they would probably say not too sure what to make of it but that would be the end of it right but it wasn't. And some of the people who said stuff, I was like, come on, dude. So I saw Pasha tweet. And Pasha was like, see you at LAN cheaters. And I don't know if that's an endorsement or whatever uh, on his part. Because, you know, it's Pasha, right? And I think he's a playful kind of guy. And, you know, I don't think he's malicious. But he's definitely said in the past, you know, like, if you cheat against us, we will find you. If you, you know, he, he's very militant about it. And I'm like, you know, whatever. I'd be pissed off too, right, if someone cheated against me. But, you see, this is the problem. This is the problem with militant thinking. You never know who you're going to be playing with in the future. You never... And, and, and this is what I'm saying, right? So this is from 2011. This is Snacks, okay? One of the best players in the world right now. Some say arguably the best player. Uh, monstrous performances. Um, you know, certainly outside of Astralis anyway. But that's, you know, that's a topic you can beat me over the head with another day. But I, I think Snacks is a phenomenal talent, right? Now, he had one of these two-year bans. He had the full 12 penalty points. What's interesting about Snacks' case is uh, there wasn't a lot of information available, but where other people who got banned in the same wave uh, were, were told exactly what they were for and, and were told that rehabilitation would be possible, Snacks didn't have that. He, he wasn't uh, allowed to have cheat rehabilitation. So this implies that not only had he cheated, he perhaps tried to evade the ban or he'd done something else malicious. Now... Again, this is outside of, of, of global offensive, uh, but, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater, right? Snacks, one of the best players in the world, has been caught cheating, 
by ESL, by, by the same league that wants to give these people a chance. Uh, and and would anyone would anyone say Snacks is cheating now? Would you say he's cheating now? I mean, if you believe that, go to Dan M's channel, right? I mean, and I don't even think he's ever done a video on Snacks. So this proves, right? I mean, this is like an example of rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Uh, he cheated in the past, you know, he made some bad errors of judgment, um, perhaps didn't understand the wider ramifications. He's a young man, you know, and boom now he's one of the best players in the world and i think would if, if he was here and we were talking you know i'd talk to snacks a lot i think he's a great guy like really got a lot of time for him uh, i'm pretty sure he'd say yeah you know wow that was like a low point in my life i can't believe i ever did that i'm completely against cheating i'm all about fair play right so you know versus pro you you kind of lose your right to say once a cheater always a cheater and criticize cheaters when you're playing with an ex cheater. i'm sorry it's I love you guys, but it's just logical consistency. So let's move on to the other bit of hypocrisy. Uh, and this was um, just seized, right? Now, look again, got a lot of time for seized. You all know that. People used to say I was crazy because I was singing his praises all the time. I, 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 felt, uh, I felt vindicated uh, long term, but big, big fan of seized, right? So this was seized's tweet on the matter. And you can see uh, this is... Uh, in response to Rush from Optic saying, I'd rather see 50 match fixes unbanned before I see one cheater unbanned. And it's like, bruh, bruh, you can't be serious. Because if you go to, uh, you know, Simple, Simple obviously was banned from ESL. Uh, let me just bring that up. Um, I don't have the link to hand. Uh, hang on. Good planning. Uh, but he again, in Simple's case, he didn't just cheat. Wicked, that's a fake link. Uh, in Simple's case, he didn't just cheat. He evaded the, the, the ban. And everybody made a huge deal about this. I mean, this isn't just... Um, you know, this isn't just player hypocrisy right this is community hypocrisy do you remember the countdown that we all had yeah do, do, do you remember it uh the count we had a countdown for when simple was going to be unbanned because we knew he was such a talent right and and again this guy didn't just cheat he then later tried to evade the cheat which is two offenses yet here we were as a community we had uh you know, a, 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 a fucking countdown for when he was going to be unbanned so we could get on a good team. And everybody reveled in watching him play. And Simple did other shit as well, you know? Like, I mean, he's been involved in scamming and stuff like this. Like, he, he had a very checkered past, you know? I think he's blossomed into a, a fine professional player, one of the biggest talents in World CS. But this is a guy who, uh, as I said, had uh, a, a ban on ESL and then evaded that ban. So how can you lack that self-awareness? Like, I would never want to see a cheater unbanned. The best player on your team's a fucking ex-cheater, dude. Get a grip. But there is no grip to be found in the frothing hysteria uh, that uh, we've seen in the aftermath of this judgment. So fuck it, I can't find the original link to, to the one on Liquipedia defaults to an old ESL link that doesn't work but you all know it's true and uh and again this wasn't like an all 1.6 ban or anything i think the ban was in 2013 so just putting that out there as well now here's another thing that was hip hypocritical in my opinion there was a bulgarian player called dreamer and we all we all love dreamer apparently uh now dreamer was vac banned and used the old tried and tested excuse of my account was hijacked. My account was hijacked. My brother did it. My goldfish did it. Whatever it is, it wasn't me, right? But it, there you go. It's, it's shaggy. It wasn't me, right? And you see this with cheaters. Like, there's a pattern every time a cheater gets caught. It's always, oh, how did that happen? It wasn't me. Oh, now I remember. I've been loaning my account out to people. Or I totally forgot to mention it. Six, seven months ago, my account got hijacked. It must have been then. It must be an old, crazy delay. Whatever it is, right? People will just lie. And there's no transparency on Valve's part. So they consider it a safe lie. 
And during this period of time, I mean, we all saw the bullshit. Does this happen because we are from Bulgaria? No, it happens because he's got a vac ban. It happens because he fucking cheated. Yeah, that didn't stop journalistic outlets taking up the torch for this person. Check this out. This is on the Esports Observer. Uh, again, affiliated with Jens Hilgers, who's affiliated with ESL, uh, just as a reminder, da daily reminder about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, look, the Dreamer case, Valve's mistrial over a young Bulgarian CSGO shooting star. Mistrial? How can anybody in the public domain make uh, an assessment as to whether it's a mistrial if there's been no evidence uh, presented? But look, you can see, this is Tiemo Brautigam again, uh, you know, an interesting wannabe journalist, let's put it that way. Uh, and here he is saying, you know, uh, he was banned by Valve's anti-cheat. Uh, he talks about how his case is, you know, unique. Uh, he's one of the best uh, players, uh, arguably among the top 20 players in the world. And it was a serious error. I mean, definitively, he just takes the player version as, um, you know, gospel. Uh, and he says, you know, the integrity of sport is not only damaged by cheats and match fixes, but also by arbitrary justice, which I, I definitely agree with that. But in this instance, there is no proof that it was arbitrary justice. Now, this uh, this case, obviously, in that article goes to Reddit, right? And again, look, I know Reddit, I know you're all different people and logging in at different times, but let's just talk about consensus, right? Let's talk about consensus because that, well, that's what we're critiquing in this video. So unfortunately, even if you had nothing to do with it and you completely disagree with the consensus that was reached at this time, you know, think of it like Brexit, all right? Like, you know, this is how, what happened this one year ago. And yeah, okay, top comment. I believe he's innocent when he makes all this uh, available. Killer, he got it voted. He came late to the thread uh, and basically said, like, actually, you know, I, I want to point this out. But generally, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, everyday Valve wait, it's harder for him to prove it. Uh, he, well, what else have we got? Um, you know, what? Uh, just, that's a bop. Um, you know, someone says their pro shouldn't get banned. Uh, you know, uh, account recovery simple task. Uh, you know, so yeah, okay, maybe it's not as uh, one sided. Uh, but um, he's legit insanely good on LAN. Be a waste if he couldn't attend Valve sponsored events. Uh, some people endorsing in the meme. Um, you know, uh, and you can see it's really sad. We all know Valve made the decision. You know, so again, it wasn't like this huge outpouring uh, that we saw. Where it was like, well, he's a cheater, so fuck him in the face, right? Which is what everyone else is saying about all these other cheaters now, suddenly. So, you know, look, uh, is Dreamer a talented guy? Yeah. Can he play on LAN? Yeah. Does he have a VACBAN account? Yeah. Did he lie about it? Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll just show you, again, just in case you didn't know this, and in case you still believe that this guy is innocent, uh, I trust Valve, all right? Because you get into all kinds of legal pickles, if you start lying publicly and while they don't comment publicly and only do in the rarest of cases they commented on this one and this is Edo and I've known him a long time uh, and I've got a lot of respect for the man and I trust him so you can see here he, he waited into a thread about Nilla doing a comeback after he got a back ban and he goes nope he's not eligible and then he said why'd you guys reply to this but nothing about Dreamer and he said Dreamer's ineligible to participate and everyone was like you know lol does this happen because he is from bulgaria uh, and then look dreamers claim of not being in control of his csgo vac band account at the time of the infraction is not supported by our records therefore he is ineligible to participate in valve sponsored events now look here's the thing does anyone walk it back and say oh we don't want dreamer to, to play at these events no they don't um it was it was quite strange actually a lot of people were advocating for it i think one or two pros did and i remember shazam caught some heat for calling this issue out you know shazam of all people right moral arbiter um shazam here when he competed at an esca LAN where uh, I believe Dreamer was, was there and allowed to compete. He said, never thought I'd play it in an ESEA LAN where multiple players have VAC banned accounts. And you can see someone even replies, I mean, this is a ludicrous comment. Stop judging people from their VAC. You don't know how heartbreaking inside it is to have one. Well, I mean, don't fucking cheat is the, the easy way to avoid one. You know, people talked uh, about, uh, you know, Natu from 2005. Again, proof of this once a cheater, always a cheater nonsense. Um... But uh, that was what Shazam said, and then you know pe this was a reply uh, to to Shazam because there was there wasn't it wasn't just Dreamer who was the vac band competitor there. But you can see 
sh- for people wondering, the VAC band player players are Tux from Chiefs and Dreamer uh, from MK. Uh, both players are the best performing in their team, which was true. Now we can uh, take we can we can infer something from this right and i don't know what we, what we should infer but i guess you could look at it one way and that is that um you know you've been an ex cheat it doesn't necessarily affect your ability to perform on lan and people should be given the benefit of the doubt and we believe that lan is a hermetically sealed environment where you can't cheat and if you do an on lan it doesn't really matter if you have vac bands right i mean that's kind of like the the implication there uh, and another is like you know oh well l- look at this uh, talent that would go to waste if we had lifetime bands now again i don't know uh, or, you know if, if you guys still support this but certainly there wasn't a big uptake at the time to say those guys should have been kicked out the tournament for having vac bands you know people were like you know lol how can shazam speak people tunneled in on him well he's never been vac banned though has he so you know he's definitely got a platform there's no hypocrisy here uh, you know he's been consistent he doesn't think vac band players should be competing at a tournament and uh, of course that was when he was there with echo fox uh, and they didn't do too well right so they didn't fare too well they lost the teams uh, that had former vac band players in so obviously perhaps a little bit of salt but whatever so uh what what do we think about dreamer then i mean do we still do, do we do we want to walk back all of the support he had uh now that we can say unequivocally he lied and was vac banned he must have cheated uh do we want to say that or do we want to say actually you know it's it is a shame that this talent is banned and maybe he could go on to be like a new simple or whatever if he was allowed to play on the biggest stage and maybe we should look into rehabilitating him you know which one is it you tell me guys because you know you are as a you as a community are all over the place there was petitions to get dreamer unbanned or to say i he's proved himself i think he can play at uh you know valve tournaments i think a few pros came out and said uh, yeah, we'd have no problem with Dreamer performing at a tournament. Well, again, we, we got, can we be consistent, guys? So here's something else I want to talk about, right? And I want you to think about this, and I want you to just try and, you know, use your imagination and just deactivate uh, any prejudices that you might have. So let's talk about what constitutes cheating. The big objection seems to be if if you cheat in a game to gain an unfair advantage, and look, I know about all the cheating software and blah blah, blah written about it for years, right? But if you gain any advantage, right, and that ends up with you unfairly getting a result that deprives your teammates of money, this seems to be the big stumbling block. It's the money element. This is Sean Gares again, another man I respect. Uh, ridiculous you can cheat at the pro level steal money from any opponent you face and get them banned after two years Carmack replied saying it works this way in sports do you think that's ridiculous also uh, and he said never been a fan of comparing traditional sports to esports uh, but especially so in this instance uh, steroids doesn't uh, equal uh, is not equal to using cheat um, so yeah and that's kind of true uh, you, you know just on that I- issue it's probably worth talking about um, certainly there, there isn't really a, a, an analogy. It's kind of like steroids because obviously when you use a cheat, uh, it does give you an unfair advantage. But um, again, imagine if every time you kicked a football, you never missed. You know, you would go fly in the top corner every time. You could win every game, you know, as many times as you could take that shot. Uh, you know, that's that. there's not really a suitable analogy. But what I will say is nobody's using that level of cheat on a pro level because then you just get caught right i mean like if it's too obvious so you have to dial it down you have to make it hard for yourself you have to make the cheat work so then it does become a little bit like steroids like it gets you if you can get close it'll push you over the edge into you know so it's it's difficult it's difficult to make a direct comparison so i agree with sean in that sense but that still doesn't alter the fact that yes in every other sport people have cheated people have uh you know i mean look at fucking combat sports you know mma boxing right how many times have people fucking doped gone in pounded someone into the fucking ground and then got a ban like later on you know i mean like i'm sure that guy who's like stitching his fucking jaw back on is like yeah brilliant (laughs) super happy about him getting a ban but ultimately you know should that felt should that guy be allowed to come back and compete yeah 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 well it turns out a lot of people say yeah You you don't have lifetime bans for for doping unless you're like some sort of deranged serial offender uh, there was another comment 
And I, I, I throw this one in because it's going to be relevant to something to talk about later. Uh, from Automatic. Uh, Automatic uh, said, uh, if I started cheating right now, I could earn enough money to pay for my tuition, get banned, finish school, and come back and compete. So again, it's about the money. And everyone's like, lol, lol, imagine that. Imagine cheating to win some money. You know what I mean? Imagine, imagine stealing money from somebody else. So um, if the money theft is the issue, if depriving somebody of prize money is the issue then again well ringing right ringing has to be bad i mean it has to be not as bad but it has to be on this scale that we must absolutely condemn and turns out you know one of their teammates one of the cloud nine teammates uh nothing uh, he got banned from esea uh for ringing uh in a game and, and, and account sharing and they did this uh, to kind of pervert, subvert, whatever you want to call it, to subvert results uh, for a tournament. Um, and this was, you know, a, this is a big deal. This was back, this is in 2011. Again, it's not like ancient history. Uh, and, you know, Jordan had to suck it up and got a ban for this. Uh, he's not alone. He's not alone in being a, somebody that got, uh, um, you know, caught doing this. Now, only pussies, uh, will try and win no matter what. Well, you know, Fallen uh, was a ringer in a game. Uh, you can see here, Fallen got banned from O2 online events back in 2010. Uh, and that was when he was uh, at, at Complexity. And he got a year ban. And this was because he acted as a ringer in another game to help somebody pretty much uh, win a qualifier. Now, just to be clear here, am I saying it's as bad? No, but if the issue is that you do something dishonest and you deprive people of prize money, then if you, you know, what could be worse than ringing for somebody, right? You being a better level of player, you know, you, you help a team that doesn't deserve to win, win by you know, obscuring your involvement. They don't get to go. I mean, especially with qualifiers, right? You don't get to go to this awesome event. It was, it was unfair. That's pretty bad, right? And again, I mean, you know, the, one of the people who came out and tweeted uh, again about this, uh, you know, VAC ban two years thing was was Adren, or Adren, you know, I should say, uh, the Gambit one. And um, for some reason, that's not going to come up because Xplit is a piece of shit. Okay, well, you're not going to see that. But trust me, he did. Uh, and of course, he... Uh, was was banned uh, for account sharing and ringing uh, in the World Championship, which you can see here uh, from EFRAG. This is where Kazakhstan got disqualified, and this is over, you know, Dozier, who played in place for Zlex and was an absolute beast, right? And Adrian was the, the captain and, and knew about it, and he's got banned, and Hobbit's got banned, and, you know, they all knew. They all knew that Dozier was ringing for them, and they didn't have a problem with that. And they did it against, you know, uh, they did it against France, like a, you know, to ensure that they won. Now there was prize money on the line for this. This was a this was a competition that had prize money. This wasn't like some prestigious event. I mean, you know, maybe it doesn't excuse it in your mind one way or the other. But if prize money's issue, and that's what pros keep saying to me. If you do anything dishonest to take away prize money, then you've got to say that these people, you know, fuck it, dudes, you've done it, right? So, and look, I, I'm, again, I'm with you, all right? You know, watching this right now saying, oh, that's thin, that's tenuous. I mean, it's not if we make money the be-all and end-all. But definitely, for me, downloading cheat software is, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do. And then next is probably match fixing and then just below that probably ringing but these are all things that should get you banned these are all things that should be taken very seriously these are all things that uh, fuck up the competitive integrity of our beautiful game of our beautiful scene so um and also as well you'll notice that some of those bands are really old well yeah because once a cheater, always a cheater is, is nonsense. I mean, think about it logically, right? Uh, what are you saying? Once a cheater, always a cheater. Oh, but that happened in 1.6. So what? It's once a cheater, always a cheater, as long as it's the same game engine. Well, that makes no sense. That That's completely stupid. So to, to kind of start winding the video down, the key thing in all of this is the redemptive and rehabilitative 
element. And a lot of people bringing up I buy power on this. Like, wow, I buy power, I'll never get to play. I mean, I saw some unbelievably uh, dumb comments. Like, unbelievably dumb. Uh, like, just imagine if Dazed had cheated, he'd be back now. Well, no, because he, he, he would have still been involved in the throat. Like, why would the ban... You know, just complete fucking idiocy. Uh, there's no other word for it. Um, but here's the thing. I, even as the guy that was effectively the guy that got I by Power banned, I've, I've been out there and said, I think a two-year ban would have been appropriate. And everybody seems to agree. Everybody wants to see these guys come back. It's been especially hard for me watching these guys become other people, become different people. It's just, you know, still dealing with, uh, you know, uh, depression and, and, and really struggling because his life is now about this one moment, this one decision. You know, Dazed went through a similar thing. It was very painful watching his stream for a while. I don't think anybody deserves that. You don't think anybody deserves that, right? So, but let's be clear about what match fixing does. When you fix a game, even if the result is of no consequence, uh, you are robbing all the people who bet on that game. Get you know, the, 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 you are stealing from them. It's the same thing. It just affects the public, not your fellow pros. Is that worse? Is that better? You know. Uh, you, you guys have got to be consistent on that. Everybody, you know, I'd say the majority, I'd say about 70% are pushing for I buy power to, to be unbanned, to get an appeal and to have a date set on when they can return to competition. That's something I fully support. But how do you think we ever get to have that discussion if you shut down everyone else's ability to show that they can rehabilitate? How do you think we ever get to talk to Valve about our I buy power? If you, if you as a community believe that a VAC ban it does, warrants a, a lifetime ban, and fuck you if you ever want to come back. So all the pros that are saying former cheaters and, and VAC ban players shouldn't be allowed to compete ever again, but will take I buy, I buy power back in a heartbeat, well... Again, you're gonna, you can't do it. You've either got to say we need an appeal system and we need bans to be contextual, or it's one fuck up lifetime ban. Valve is the king. So this is the issue. This is why we don't really have the system that I think we all want in place, and that is that we want a system where bans are contextual. We want a system where we can say from start to finish. Uh, you know, look, it was a fair ban, they did this, the evidence was presented, and they have been given a one-year ban, a two-year ban, a five-year ban, a ten-year ban, a lifetime ban. That's what we want, right? We want that sliding scale. That's in line with every other sport in the world. Uh, it's very rare you see lifetime bans in sports. We've got to do something unbelievably fucking heinous. Uh, you know, people talk about South Korea, you know, like, oh, but what about the match fixing there? Those people went to jail. Yeah, okay, well, gambling's illegal for South Korean nationals. It was a huge match fixing ring done on, uh, you know, uh, illegal gambling websites. Uh, they did it over a period of months across multiple games. It's not the fucking same thing. You know, you've got to take, and this is the key thing, context matters context matters the key reason why we don't have this system is because it will require a lot of work valve want to be hands-off and you know i i respect that because i've seen what happens when a developer is hands-on riot and now blizzard it's not cool it's not going to be good you know you get told if you can be involved in their game in their community in their space and they'll leverage everything against you or push you out if you're if you don't play nice if you expose things they'd rather weren't exposed that's what those companies believe is an acceptable form of behavior. I'll take Valve being hands-off any day of the week because it allows us to organically grow stuff. But they will come in because they do care about competitive integrity. Hence why match fixing carries a lifetime ban. What we need is a commissioner. We, I've said this. Now, Valve has said they've got no intention of doing this and they don't understand how it would work. But as things like the majors are going to be there and Valve are going to say, look, if you cheat or you do match fixing, we don't want you involved in it. And yet, some of the companies that are going to take a stance like ESL did are going to want to bid for the majors. 
I think Valve are going to have to... I would like them to walk that stance back. I would like them to appoint somebody, call them a community manager, call them a commissioner, and all they do is communicate with the public when a VAC ban occurs. And they don't... Right, and, and the excuse for this that gets used is, oh, well, it'll allow cheaters to help evade VAC, as if that's not going on anyway. Um, you don't have to say what the cheat was. You just have to say what it does. You don't have to say the days he used it. You just have to give a rough time period. Because if you get vacked having a stupid fucking, you know, mess around with mates in matchmaking once, and somebody told you a cheat was fine, and it wasn't, and you get a vac ban off that, it's very different, isn't it, to somebody that took a private cheat and systematically used it in multiple competitions to gain an advantage, you know, uh, like Ke like Kelly, who says, oh, I never used it at LAN, and then you look at some of the footage, and you're like, fuck off, mate, um, you know, they're different cases, yet they carry the same sentence. Surely you guys can see how absurd that is. And plus, in the absence uh, of information, without that information being disseminated to the public, you get people like Emilio, who are like, no, I never cheated, I never cheated, I never cheated. I did, but I only cheated once. You always notice how they only cheat once. Well, I don't want, to, I don't want that lie to perpetuate. I want Valve to come out and go, okay, they used a uh, low FOV aim, but... Uh, and they used on you know, a wall hack and they used it on these dates and online competitions and they even used it at this LAN on this date, you know, or, or not even the dates, but they used it at this LAN, they used it here. And then boom, like we, we're like, okay, well, fuck it. Or even better, just say it, they used it at a LAN competition. We can prove it. That's all we need to know to say, well, okay, well, fuck Emilio, you know, he deserves a five year ban. You know, he deserves, he should be banned for life, right? He systemically tried to cheat the system. This is the point, right? that no two bands are alike bands have got to be contextual and the idea of like a lifetime ban you know fuck snacks fuck simple fuck you know, fuck all these players down the years that have got vac bands that would never be allowed to come back or have been banned by other anti-cheat software like esl wire esea you know fuck them all they never be allowed to play again is that what we want you know, think about that. Think about some of the talent that would slip through the cracks. I don't think that makes Counter-Strike a better game. So, seriously, let's get to a place where we can admit, because it's true, that only the most heinous mistakes deserve lifetime punishments. Because I know you believe that, because I hear it every fucking day about I Buy Power, when I get hate mail still to this day about how I got them banned and ruined their lives. Right? So I know the consensus is that you believe it, so start applying it to other people and as for the pros that are like on teams with ex-cheaters uh and are coming out and saying that that's absurd uh and 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 let's let's not forget there's going to be cheaters in the future by the way it, it, the chances of us going like two years without somebody else of note getting banned uh, uh close to zero in my opinion and what's going to happen when that comes out are the players who played with him going to come out and go oh well we didn't know please forgive us and oh uh, we don't believe he would ever do this and he's a good guy and you know if that's going to happen then you're going to prove yourself again to be hypocrites on this issue so those are my thoughts I, I i think esl system is a step in the right direction i think it aligns with their brands i think it aligns with real sports and as i said i think context matters i'd like to see valve get more hands on not more hands off on this issue i think the public need to know if their pros are clean know what they did and what the punishments are and i'd like to see again this opportunity for people who have made awful errors of judgment if it's contextually appropriate to get a chance to compete at the highest level in cs because i believe in redemption and second chances there it is that those are my